Hey guys, so I'm out here doing my my morning garden routine and I've realized that one of my tomato plants is going to have to go. Um, it is one of my Paul Robeson tomatoes that I have planted out here and it has got some sort of blight and from what I can see um, it is too far gone and it is I have been coming out here and pruning and pruning and pruning I've re been removing every bit that I could find but we're getting to the point that I already took out a huge chunk of this plant and every morning there's more blight so I am going to remove the entire tomato plant for the good of the garden because I do not want that blight to spread to my other plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. Now when I come out here and I, and I prune, uh, depending on how much I'm pruning, generally if I'm just removing suckers or excess foliage or anything like that, I'll just drop it down onto the, the mulch or the soil down below. Just let that break down and add to the soil in the bed with two exceptions number one if it's covered with pests like if i've got a limb completely covered in aphids i'm not going to leave that in my garden i'm just not because why why let them go right back in there i'm going to remove that um, the other thing is if there is illness if there is a sickness in the plant that is not going to stay in the garden it's also not even going to get composted because i don't want the blight to be in the compost that later goes into my garden. So I will be pulling this plant out and it'll actually be going all the way out to the burn pile so that it is nowhere near anything to do with the garden. The other thing is after I am done cutting it all out, any tools that I use, I will sanitize these. Um, that can be done with a diluted bleach spray. It can be done with rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, just something to kill any sort of illness that could be on these tools. Because if I use this to prune up a sick plant and then I go to a healthy plant, I've contaminated the healthy plant and I may be spreading the illness, that blight, to my good plants. So with that, it's time to remove the plant. So here you can see on these leaves right here, all of this spotting and, and sickness. Yesterday morning I came out and I removed a lot of this tomato plant. I removed every single leaf that had a single spot that I could find. And as you can see, I come back this morning and it is all over it. So I'm going to just take out the entire plant and hope it hasn't spread to any of the others.
All right, so one of the interesting things is you can tell that this plant was under some sort of stress and not healthy because while the stem is nice and sturdy, I have one, one tomato. There's blossoms, but I've got one lone tomato on there. So when you have an otherwise healthy looking plant not producing, that's a quick sign that there's something wrong. But you can see bit by bit, this plant has just been dying. Hey guys, so I have got my tool basket, my garden tools. Uh, earlier in this video, I talked about having to pull out one of my tomato plants because there was some sort of illness going on and it just completely destroyed that tomato plant. Well, unfortunately, I'm out here in my big garden and I have discovered the same sort of blighty looking problem with another tomato plant. And I think what has happened, or what could have possibly happened is, as I was going through and uh, pruning tomato plants, I may have actually transferred the illness from one plant to another before I actually knew that my plants were getting sick. I mean, I sterilize my tools after I use them. If I have plants that have an obvious blight or anything like that, um, but if it was already on the plant and I just didn't see it, I may have transferred it with one of my tools. The other thing is I did figure out what is probably going on with the tomato plant. It's actually a virus and this virus is usually transmitted to your plant by thripes or thrips. I'm actually not sure how you pronounce that. But those are itty bitty little tiny pests that look like white specks on your leaves. They are a fraction of the size of an aphid. They're super, super tiny. And I did see those on this particular tomato plant. Um, so unfortunately, I've got it going on here again, and I don't want it to spread to my other tomato plants because it does spread aggressively. And so we're gonna have to do the hard thing, and we're going to have to sacrifice a tomato plant. And, you know, the other tomato plant, I had cut it back bit by bit until there was really clearly no, no chance of that plant surviving. This is at a stage where this plant is actually looking really good, but I searched through tomato plant problems and this, the leaves, the markings on these leaves are exactly like this illness. I don't think it's a blight, I think it's that virus. So, it sucks, it's hard to have to do this, but if I don't, I could lose all of these tomato plants. So, We're going to have to do the hard thing. <laughs> Take a look at these leaves and you can see this illness that is on these tomato plants and while right now it's only on a few leaves it will quickly transmit all throughout the plant and just absolutely kill it and what's really difficult is my plants here are all kind of intermingled oh this needs to get tied up
This really stinks because there are tomatoes all over this plant. All right, so I don't see any signs of this on the other plants that are in this bed. So hopefully doing this really tough thing will save them from catching this virus. So the virus that is on my tomato plant, the one here and then the one that was out in the other garden, is called the tomato spotted wilt virus. And I actually found a website that is put out by uh, Clemson University that has descriptions of all different types of tomato issues, whether it's a blight or a virus or anything like that. And many things can actually be treated. Often your tomato plants can recover. However, this particular one cannot be treated and they're like, get the tomato plant out of your garden. So that's the only option and unfortunately that's what I had to do. I will put a link to that article uh, that website down below. They actually have that as a PDF so that you can print it, download it, stick it in your garden journal. It's a great resource for when you are trying to troubleshoot an issue with your tomatoes. So now I am going to gather up all of these pieces of tomato plant, take them off to the burn pile, and have a sad moment for them. <laughs> But before I wrap this video up, I just want to mention at the very beginning of the video, you saw me making some homemade bread. And years ago, I started making all of our bread from scratch. I mill my own wheat, which by the way, is super easy to do. Don't let it intimidate you. You literally pour some wheat into a mill and you get whole grain flour out the other side. Um, I used to make all of our bread, all of our hamburger buns. I used to do all of this stuff from this basic bread recipe that I have. And that recipe is on my blog. It makes four standard loaf, uh, standard size loaves. And it's, it's super easy. I, I kind of got away from making my own breads uh, a few years ago. But then a couple years ago, I went paleo. I cut out all grains, sugar, legumes, soy, all that stuff. And I felt so much better. But a couple of months ago, I started thinking, you know, back when I milled my own wheat and I had that fresh, fresh wheat and homemade bread, not store-bought flour, not store-bought bread or anything like that, I felt really good back then. Now, if I go out and I eat pasta or bread or anything like that, I wake up the next morning and I am instantly in pain. My hands are absolutely killing me. My ankles hurt. My whole body just feels wretched. But I got to thinking, I wonder if that homemade bread with the fresh milled wheat will do that to my body. And so I was actually talking with a friend of mine who has some health concerns and she was wondering the same thing. She's like, I wonder if I can eat that bread. And she was wanting to try and see if her body could handle it. Well, I decided the other day to make that bread. And I have to tell you, I got up the next morning and my hands didn't hurt. Um, I have had homemade fresh bread for two days now and I am not feeling that inflammation building up in my body. Now I am still going to monitor everything else. I'm going to see uh, do I start gaining weight back or anything like this. So there's a lot of different things for me to keep an eye on to know for certain if my body's handling it okay but I am excited to possibly be able to at least have some bread because I really missed having toast in the morning with my coffee, especially from homemade bread. So if you are interested in that recipe, I will link it down below. Uh, I make my bread in a mixer. I use the dough hook. I have a Bosch mixer. Uh, it works fantastic. And again, this recipe is for fresh milled wheat. It's my favorite bread recipe. I use that as a basic bread. I will make not only sandwich bread out of it, but I'll also make hamburger buns, hot dog buns, cinnamon rolls, 
anything I want to that requires bread dough. So that is it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garden and in the kitchen. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and you can also sign up for my free newsletter. It is a weekly newsletter that goes out at the beginning of the week to keep you updated on everything that is going on on the website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, as well as the channel here. So again, thanks for hanging out with me here in the garden and in the homestead kitchen. And I will talk to y'all next time.